real for me if you ask me um, there were signs everywhere to be uh, careful and respectful because this is the burial ground where the slaves used to be buried um, at that time when Thomas Jefferson had slaves so it's a very solemn ground I, um, I did read that the names of the enslaved residents who were buried here are not even known you know it, it's not even possible to identify which particular individual was buried where so but they said they took very careful um, consideration you know when doing some archaeological work here so they did not disturb any remains um, it is very surreal it's very very surreal that uh, this is where those slaves hi family i'm dr brenda Wobriosti. i'm a licensed daycare provider a published author of three children's books an advocate a consultant a veteran's wife and a mother if you need help setting up your daycare service or just looking for great ideas to incorporate a play-based learning approach as well as learn about research-based solutions to issues impacting education this is the channel for you subscribe share like thank you okay guys we went to Monticello in Charlottesville, Virginia. Um, it's the home of Tom, Thomas Jefferson. And my husband is a history fanatic. I'm really not, although I'm kind of getting into it now. And um, he likes to go to these places and show me these places. And I, you know, I was excited to go. Um, we're, we're just in the car driving to Charlottesville. Uh, Charlottesville is in Virginia, like I said, and um, the drive there from where we live was about two hours, maybe a little bit less than that. It was a beautiful, beautiful um, drive, beautiful scenery, um, a little bit of mountains here and there. There were um, orchards, um, lots of grape farms, um, wineries around. There were farms, you know, it was beautiful. So a little bit about Thomas Jefferson. He was born April 13th, 1743 at Shadwell, Virginia, and he died July 4th, 1826 in Monticello. This is where we're going now. Um, he was a lawyer. He was a scientist, writer. He was an architect. He actually designed this beautiful mansion that we're going to see in a few minutes. Um, Thomas's mom was Jane Randolph, and um, she was a member of uh, Virginia's very distinguished family. And then um, the father was Peter Jefferson, who was a successful surveyor and planter. And when Jefferson was 14, actually, his father died, and he inherited an estate of about 5,000 acres. That inheritance included the house at Shadwell, you know. But Jefferson always dreamed of living in the mountains. Guys, beautiful, beautiful mountains were around here in Monticello. I don't know, waking up in the morning and looking out those windows and doors, it was just, I mean, beautiful. Um, he would name this mountain Monticello, you know, and the house that he would build and rebuild over a 40-year period took on this name as well. And that's where we are heading to. Um, he began construction on a brick structure that would consist of a single room with a workout basement kitchen and also a work room which was below and uh, when we did the tour we did a guided tour we went look we are, we are here already we um, we couldn't go to the top floor they said the stairs were no longer safe to walk and they were old you know they didn't want to rebuild it to standard you know just changing things around they didn't want to do that so couldn't go to the top floor I actually did not know that his wife Martha um, did not see the completion of Monticello. She actually died in the tenth year of their marriage, and um, Jefferson lost a companion. You know, his life companion. Their marriage produced six children, but only two survived into adulthood. Wow! Martha, who was known as Patsy, and Mary, who was known as Maria or Polly. 
Now we climbed, uh, we parked the car at the parking spot. There were a lot of parking spots, so it wasn't like you couldn't get parking when you came here. And also there were a lot of people, guys. A lot of people wanted to see this mushroom. It was hot, not a very um, cool day. The sun was right there shining through, but we wanted to come here and see it. Um, I, I, um, it was serene. It was just, um, you know, I, sometimes when you hear these stories about slavery and how people lived in those days, you, you, you would think, oh man, this is not real, you know. But when you come to places like this where it was real, where there were slaves who actually worked here, you know, um, slaves were buried here. Actually, um, we did go to the slave burial ground, and you see that at the end, and um, it, you hear my thoughts about that as well. It's just, it's just surreal. It's um, you, you know, you start to realize this was real. This was how people actually lived. This was their existence. You know, there were free people and there were slaves. It's just um. Is mind-boggling. Um, while we were going in, we had to go through that metal detector. They were very, very um, concerned about that because there's a, a little safe where you could put, if you had a gun or a knife, you know, they had the safe there where you could turn those in before you walked all the way up to wherever you needed to walk to. Now, when we, um, when you just walk in, there's like a little gift store. There's a little, um, like a a little let me say a little restaurant you know where you can buy food when we finally made our way there the little restaurant was closed but we were able to still go into the gift shop to get there after paying for your tickets and everything to get there you had to take a train uh, sorry I'm sorry <laughs> you had to take a bus um, to transport you down there or they call it van. I'm saying bus. Could be a bus, could be a van. <laughs> but um, it transports you there, and as you go, there's um, a little bit of history inside the van, and also telling you where uh, Thomas Jefferson's grave site was. We couldn't go there because, like, it was in between where we took the van um, to where we um, where the van eventually stopped. So getting down and going in there would, would have meant that we, we had to walk, you know. So we, did, we couldn't do that. We had a toddler with us. But um, look how that mansion sits. Look at that. Look at that porch, which you will see later. Look how amazing it is. Guys, I'm, we're going to go back here. Um, my husband and I, we're going to go back here and we're not going to use um, the uh, tour guides. We're, uh, we're the tour guides. We're just going to um, explore the building by ourselves, you know, because when you go in with a group, you go, there were, um, it wasn't like, a, there wasn't too many people in the group. It was that I just wanted to do this by myself, you know, um, with my husband. And he knows the history. Um, so look at that X of land look at the greenery just close your eyes and picture what would have been when Thomas Jefferson lived here you know where they um, how were they how, how were they living the horses the slaves oh my goodness guys it was um, it was surreal it was surreal so we first got in here this is the library and I'm gonna let this lady tell you about the library so much so that we do have some of his books here today. Any book that you see behind plexiglass, both on the shelf to my right, as well as the shelf to my left, those are his books that he owns. So you can look at some of the titles that we have. Any book that you see that's not behind plexiglass are titles that he wouldn't own, which is not his exact copies. Now I talked to you about reading and books, so I want to talk about the War of 1812, which started in what year? Did I go now? So this was the moment I had to walk out the door and just take the toddler out because he was ready. Um, you know, he couldn't stay in there for too long. And um, even coming outside and exploring the outdoors, it was just amazing. Just imagine, guys, imagine slaves walking up and down these, um, these floors. Just imagine, just imagine. 
Mm-hmm. Um, it's very surreal when you go to places like this. Very, very surreal. Also admire the architecture of here. You know, the beautiful buildings. Everything had a reason. Um, it's, it's just, it's amazing. Look at that. It's beautiful. It was a nice workout, just um, walking through Monticello. It was amazing. Onto the butterfly gardens, they were almost heavenly. Um, you will hear me talking on the background butterfly, to my song. Butterfly, 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 butterfly. Butterfly, butter, 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 butterfly. Wow, that is so cute. <gasps> Look at this yellow one. Yellow. Wow, so pretty. <gasps> wow. Look at that. Don't fall. Come here so you can see some more butterflies. Come, come up here. You're going to fall. Oh no, look at that big one! <gasps> oh no! Let's go see it. Look at that big butterfly. Okay. Come on, let's go see it. <gasps> oh wow, it's big. Big butterfly. Oh wow, look, look. Can you see it? Oh man. Oh man. Butterfly. <gasps> oh. oh, look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful, Baba. Oh, me. So many butterflies. What color is it? What color is it? Yellow. I see yellow. I see black. I see white. Huh? Oh, man, it's beautiful. What color is it? What color do you see? Hmm? You see white? Yellow? You see yellow? It is shoved into the wall, and that is to save space and to make the room more efficient. Except Jefferson was six two and a half. So how did he sleep? Sitting up. Sitting up, absolutely <laughs> right. Uh, sitting up, propped up with pillows. I know, kind of sounds like a recipe for pins and needles in the morning. I know, uh, but it was popular at the time. Uh, fashionable even, and he thought that it was better for his posture as well as his health. He also started every morning with a cold foot bath, and he did live to be 83. Now, I noticed a couple people admiring another space saving element we have in here as we walked in, and that's his closet. So y'all came through his seasonal rotating wardrobe, however his off-season wardrobe is actually above the bed where those holes are in the wall. And the way to get up there is to open that door, and it's a set of non-OSHA regulated stairs, so we don't go up there, <laughs> and it will take you up to the Light and ventilation, absolutely right. Ventilation, make sure everything is smelling nice because it is your off-season wardrobe, don't want it to get musty. And light to ensure that any enslaved worker that's going up there to grab something doesn't need to bring a candle with them, therefore limits the risk for fire. Now it was in this room on a very special day that Jefferson would pass away, that date being July 4th, 1826. And the reason why that date is so important
part of the tour was the most solemn, the most surreal for me, if you ask me. Um, there were signs everywhere to be um, careful and respectful because this is the burial ground where the slaves used to be buried um, at that time when Thomas Jefferson had slaves. So it's a very solemn ground. I, um, I did read that the names of the enslaved residents who were buried here are not even known, you know. It, it's not even possible to identify which particular individual was buried where. So, but they said they took very careful um, consideration, you know, when doing some archaeological work here, so they did not disturb any remains. Um, it is very surreal, it's very, very surreal that uh, this is where those slaves who had the hardest of lives, you know, they worked when they didn't want to work, they were forced to do what they did not want to do, they just... I mean, it's, it's sad, so it's sad, but also it's a good thing that there's this spot right here and we were not alone just walking through here, there were other people um, just quietly walking and reflecting of the lives we have now and the privileges that we have now that these people never even had a chance to see. So um, join me for a minute of silence to reverence all of these souls. May their souls rest in perfect peace.